What's up, guys? This is Emil at Euro Trash Motorsports, your source for holstered turbochargers in North America. I'm really excited about this video today because, as you can see behind me, uh, we're working on a Sprinter. For those of you that have been following the channel or perhaps some of our online forums, you will know that uh, we've been working on a turbo upgrade for the T1N Sprinters or the uh, OM612, OM647 Mercedes diesel engines for quite a while. We now finally have the time um, to, to go ahead and, and, and test some of the upgrades that we've uh, had. And today we're going to do some turbo upgrades. This is going to be a couple of quick parts. Uh, we're going to do a baseline test um, of the stock turbo, the GT22 that's sitting on this engine right now. The goal is to compare that uh, with the GT23 turbo that we have ready, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and see if we're going to get some performance upgrades that we're hoping for. Last but not least, I have a Hoset uh, HE300 unit ready to go. Now, uh, we are not ready to, uh, to run that turbo. So what we're going to do today is uh, simply fit it in and, and just kind of have a, a general look to see uh, how, how it fits in the engine bay or whether that's something we can pursue. There's a very good chance we're going to need a retune once the bigger turbo goes on, uh, but we're going to worry about that later. So stay tuned. All right, we're going to start very quickly with taking a look at the engine bay here so as you can see the om 647 motor now this is i believe past 2004 in 2003 the first version of the trucks they came out had the 612 engine slightly different manifold slightly different setup for the egr the big difference is that the turbo which we're going to unveil in a second is actually um vacuum operated as opposed to electronically accurate operated so i'm going to there's a turbo right back there I'm going to take a quick look. We're going to take all of this stuff off real quick uh, just so we can access the turbo. And uh, then we're going to start swapping them out. Now, before we do that, I just wanted to have a look at the options that we're actually talking about. So here, here is what we're going to be working with today. Now, originally uh, when I bought the, the GT23 Turbo, this comes off of um a mercedes six cylinder om648 so this is the six cylinder version of the motor uh basically the exact same engine extra cylinder so therefore more power bigger turbo that kind of thing um my hope this turbo was already rebuilt when i bought it my hope was to actually run uh the turbo as a direct swap as you can see the flanges are more or less the same between the two so my expectation was that this is going to be a direct bolt-on everything is going to be good to go however as you can imagine that's not always the case here on the left we have the uh, gt22 sort of looking setup i'll talk about it in a second and this is the gt23 off the mercedes so obviously different packaging the um, vnt actuator uh, mounted in a very different way although the actuator itself is more or less the same same part number same everything very quickly though if you flip it on the other side because of the way and the difference that these things are mounted up, they're actually set up in a bit of a different way. So you can see that the actuator arm is different. It's actually attached to the top versus the bottom, that kind of thing. But they are interchangeable. So one will sit here and one will sit there. Now, I'm going to pull the turbo that's currently on the truck right now and make sure that uh, the one that's going into it is set up the proper way. So what I ended up doing actually was taking the GT22 stock compressor housing of a turbo that I had and getting Nick at Turbo Parts Canada, see the link below, to effectively machine the compressor housing to accept the GT23 um, compressor. The rest of the turbo is the uh, GT23 unit. So all we had to do is fix the compressor housing. The rest of the unit will, will fit fine. Um, now what you're going to see, uh, why, why I didn't swap the entire turbo, here's the GT22 unit. This is a 40 millimeter compressor inducer versus the 44 millimeter compressor inducer for the 23. And actually the turbine is slightly smaller on the uh, 22 than it is on the 23 as well. So in order to avoid machining the entire, the entire housing in itself, uh, basically we just took the compressor housing off of this turbo and mounted it onto the 23 and machined around it. At the same time, what you're gonna see what I have here is a whole set HE300. Now, this is a fairly big unit compared to the 44 millimeter, which would be the equivalent of an HX30. This is a little bit bigger. This is upwards of 50 millimeters. So this is gonna be quite a lot of power 
uh, for this uh, motor, which at the moment we're not ready for because we're having a hard time sourcing fuel, um, fuel solutions for it. However, this turbo in itself is the same form factor as the Hoset HX30 Super 30, um, so the 46 millimeter of the HX30, the HX35, HE351, um, HE400, that kind of stuff. This is all the same sizing. So I like to use this turbo for sizing purposes. It basically makes it easy. What we've done last year or the year before that, we got this, um, this flange made up, which essentially allows us to mount that turbo directly to the manifold uh, the stock manifold by effectively reproducing the stock flange uh, we bolt this onto the manifold the turbo mounts to the flange and we're good to go so we're going to have a look and see whether there's going to be any size differences all right that's the quick intro so let's have a look at the motor all right uh welcome back before we do any of the work i want to do a quick baseline test of the uh, car with the stage one tune uh, this should be very straightforward, basically 0 to 100. I'll do uh, two runs, uh, wide open throttle. I let it uh, warm up. So just, just a very quick discussion of what we're going to do here. I'm going to have the camera record the speedometer. I'm going to have um, one of my 100, uh, 0 to 100 sort of recorders right there. Uh, hopefully we're going to see that. And uh, more importantly, I'm going to be logging in with my trusty VCDS software. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a Volkswagen Audi uh, diagnostic tool. Fantastic Volkswagen Audi diagnostic tool. Um, and actually doubles up as an OBD uh, logger. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna log that in there. I'm gonna get the speed there. And worst case scenario, if we start having any issues, uh, I've got my MB2 scanner as well, which should help. All right, so we're well set up here. We're going to start logging the data and off we go. second run and this time around we got 14.9 seconds let's uh, throw the other turbo on and see what happens all right we did a baseline run you saw it we did two runs uh, the best time we got 0 to 100 was 14.9 seconds so that's the time to beat so let's pull the stock turbo out and uh, see what we can do with that so we're gonna all right there it is there's a setup, there's the arm. So what we're gonna do is we're probably going to transfer all of that onto the new turbo and we're going to be good to go. Hey guys, so beautiful day today. I unfortunately wasn't able to finish everything yesterday so it's gonna take two days by the looks of it. But the good news is I've got the HE300 in and I'm going to try and get the uh, GT23 in today. All right, let's have a look at the HE300 installation. Here it is. Now, it's a fairly large turbo, as you can tell. However, it does fit quite well inside the engine bay. And you will notice, um, I've got the exhaust pipe out of the way. I had to push it out because otherwise it sits right about there for the stock turbo. So that couldn't work. So that's, the, that's about the only thing that I had to get out. Um, the heat shield here, I had to bend it a little bit out of the way. Um, probably best option is to get it off or modify it to uh, better fit the uh, HE300. Now, keep in mind, this is a large turbo, which is quite a bit larger than the GT22 or 23 uh, form factor. If at any point I'm able to find a better fuel supply bigger injectors, for example, for this particular engine. The guys at Diesel Pump UK are actually working on that. If that actually happens, then we can go into something quite a bit larger and um, be able to get a lot more power out of this motor. For the time being, 
we're going to stay with the GT23 until we have more fuel. All right, so that said, let me get the GT23 installed and perhaps we can go take the, the truck for a test drive today. Good morning, guys, and welcome to day three of what was supposed to be a one hour turbo upgrade video. Uh, we've hit a snag with the GT23 unit. It's not going to mount directly onto the car. I'm going to show you in a second why, but basically I'm going to have to cut this video short today. And we're going to resume once I have figured out the uh, what to do with the turbocharger. So for now, uh, let's have a look at what the issues are and uh, I'll see you back uh, next time. Thanks. All right, let's take a look. So what we've got here, I already showed them to you earlier, but effectively we've got the GT22 original uh, Sprinter Turbo. And what I've done is a GT23 uh, unit off of an E-Class Mercedes uh, OM648 engine, one extra cylinder. And at the time, what we did, the easiest thing to do was to machine the GT22 housing, compressor housing, basically open it up a little bit so it can fit the GT23 compressor and effectively just mount it right onto the turbo. The assumption at the time was that everything else in the back will just bolt right onto the car, uh, to the Sprinter, and we're not gonna have any issues. Um, technically, that should have been the case. The two housings are more or less the same. The housings are more or less the same, so it should have been a fairly easy fit. Um, now, I've made a couple of assumptions at the time, uh, one of which was that the VNT actuators um, are going to work, and I essentially set up the same uh, between the two units. I showed you earlier, these are the two actuators of the 22 and the 23. Um, same part number, same actuator, everything's the same. However, even as you see them from here, you will notice that they're actually not set up identical, right? So one difference is the attachment of the arm, but I don't know if you can see it on the camera, effectively, they're also at a different angle. Um, the attachment of the arm shouldn't have been a problem. Those are the two arms of the two turbos. Um, my plan was to effectively just swap the 22 setup like this onto the 23. Um, yesterday I took everything apart. Here's a 22 setup like I was talking about. It's actually the other way around like this. Like this. <laughs> um, and what I wanted to do is just effectively take this, transfer it over here. This is where the issues um, sort of come up. So as you can see, here are the two uh, VNT arm setups on the 22 and on the 23. Here's the 22. And here's the 23. You'll also notice, based on where the arm is, that actually the actuator arm is quite a bit longer on the 22 than it is on the 23. What that means is that once I put my actuator, it actually doesn't align. It does not work with the setup. Now, normally, if this was a Westgated turbo, um, I would have no problem, you know, effectively cutting the arm and adjusting it accordingly. The problem is that these are electronically controlled from the ECU. And the problem is they're clearly set up, the motor is clearly set up inside the software to um, open and close the actuators in a different manner. Now, it is entirely possible that this is the range of motion that I have, and this arm actually just does this. That's entirely possible as well. However, in order for me to figure that out, I'd have to effectively adjust all of this, mount everything on 23, mount it on the car, and see if it's gonna throw a code or not, which seems like a lot of work um, without really much benefit in case this doesn't work out. So, um, at this point, uh, the hard thing would be to start adjusting the arm, perhaps go in the tune, talk to my tuner and see if he can actually adjust this. I think what I'm actually gonna try and do is because the 23 was already rebuilt, it's a good unit, I still have all the parts. I think what I'm gonna try and do is to avoid destroying this turbo, is to actually send this turbo out for rebuild to either Turbo Parts Canada or Jeep Up Shop down in the States uh, who have done a couple of units for us before. And the goal here actually would be to retain the GT23 two stock turbine housing uh, and to modify the stock housing or reuse the stock housing that we already have and just effectively mount a GT23 compressor onto the GT22 turbine with the shaft. Now, ultimately this would have been the better upgrade in the first place because it keeps a smaller turbine with a larger compressor, which is what you generally wanna do so you don't lose any of the spool. 
So this is probably the best case scenario. And the only question is whether any of the shops are going to be able to do that in a fairly quick manner, because like I said earlier, this is a work truck and we're going to need to get it back on the road. Now I've got about a week, week and a half to play with this. So again, ideally retain the entire GT22 back end, retain the actuator, the actuator arm and everything else, and just get a bigger compressor out the front. Now it's entirely possible we might be able to get a better compressor than the GT23, but um, I'm going to leave that to the turbo shops to figure out. So that's it for now. I'm going to stop here. The truck is going to be unusable for, uh, for a couple of days. And uh, if you're interested to see the end of that, click the subscribe button and hopefully we'll get this back on the truck as fast as possible. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.